the awaited tips and tricks video on the snoo. So in this video, I will talk about a few tips and tricks that you can use in the snoo to help your baby settle down, soothe, and sleep longer. If you're curious about the snoo's functionality and what it is, make sure to check out my snoo tutorial. And if you're curious about weaning and transition to crib, make sure to check that video out. One of the biggest tips that I have for you is using the snoo's leg lifters. I actually, took a few books and put it underneath the front side of my snoo to help give a little bit of an incline to my newborn baby because newborns tend to have underdeveloped sphincters that sometimes will cause the milk to go up back into their throat and have reflux. For some babies that's very upsetting and can also lead to colic. So raising the snoo upwards at an incline really helps keep that milk down. Now I do want to say that does not make your baby's back reclined, it's all inclined, the whole bed inclines. So that is still considered safe because in the snoo your baby is still constricted to where they can move because they're inside the sac and they are connected to the sides so they can't flip over, they can't fall, they can't slant downwards. Another tip is for babies that are side sleepers. If you have a baby that is a side sleeper and loves to side sleep, you can help your baby get more comfortable in the snoo by placing a burp rag, rolling it up like this, basically roll it up like this, depending on how big your baby is, and then placing this under their knees. And that will definitely help with alignment and help them get more comfortable that will help your baby feel a little bit more secure and more support towards the knees. Another very important tip is that snoo may not work for you right away. Uh, some babies need to get used to the new sleeping environment, the new sounds, because the snoo does have different sounds different white noise and some babies just need that regimen for a few days before you can actually start to see success. Also newborns in my opinion are less likely to see that success of being soothed back to sleep because the snoo does not soothe babies that are actually hungry or uncomfortable. They soothe babies that just need that extra attention. So don't worry the snoo will not put your very very hungry baby back to sleep. If your baby is hungry they will keep crying. At least that has been my experience. Dr. Karp also mentions it in his videos. We started to see this new working for us around five weeks of age. And when I say working for us, I mean we started to see him start to have some crying or get a little bit restless. This new would turn on and go up in levels and it was actually able to soothe him back to sleep. So it did take a few weeks after he was born before he could actually be soothed back to sleep in the snoo. We did use it from day one, just as an FYI. Another tip is since every level has a different movement, different frequency of movement per minute and different sounds, you might see that your baby may be more receptive to one level than another. And if you do see that is the case and you want to make sure you keep them at that level, you can actually lock levels from your phone. Snoo also releases some pilot features every now and then and there are some pilot features that you can try that also change the way the frequency of the Snoo vibrates. For example, the car ride mode, it actually adds a little jiggle to the regular frequency of movement in the Snoo, so definitely check out that side of the app. So just take notice how it's going very smoothly, very slowly and then all of a sudden it will have a little jiggle that goes a little faster. There it is. That's the car jiggle. If you're worried about how your baby is going to transition from a moving bassinet that moves 24 seven while your baby is in it to the crib, don't worry. There is something called the weaning mode and definitely start that weaning mode, I would say a month before you want to wean your baby just to be on the safe side. And there's also something else called the motion limiter where you can limit the levels of motion. It will only go up to level two. It will not proceed to go to level three and four of motion. So definitely use those as you start to want to wean your baby off the snoo. The snoo is made for babies from zero to six months old. So you definitely want to consider when you want to start weaning your baby. 
Another thing that helped us get our baby sleep seven hours nonstop uninterrupted at 12 weeks old is the fact that initially I thought I want to keep my baby out of the snoo during the daytime. So during his naps, I would put him somewhere else on the couch, in the crib, wherever it is. But when we started putting baby in the snoo during nap times is when we actually started to see progress towards him sleeping longer at night because I believe he just attributed the snoo to sleep and he felt comfort in the snoo and he got used to the movements and what to expect so he did start to have more of a regimented schedule which led to him actually sleeping longer at night. Another thing that also helped was the fact that we gave him more stimulation that wake cycle right before bed. And one way I did that is I would dance with him, for example, and then I would take him to get his bath where we let him kick. He loved to kick and move his hands in the water. And also I really feel like that gave him some physical activity, almost like exercising for adults. He was exercising and he was ready to go to bed right at 7 p.m which we stuck to that time as well to kind of allow that consistency and what he could expect and make sure that when he is asleep by seven he is actually asleep for the night. If you have an older baby and he or she is starting to escape from that velcro and break through and you're still swaddling full swaddling there is a way that you can make sure that they are more secure by using a burp rag. This is a trick on keeping their arms in the Velcro. All right, let's place baby here. Get a little burp rag. It can be a little shorter, but basically you wrap and you put under their body, just like that. And then you wrap and you put under their body, just like that. And then just like that, you can put the Velcro on here, bottom up, and they can't escape the Velcro. Now it's really important not to let your baby be a little too low into the Velcro. If your baby's too low, let's say you're down here, Velcro comes on like this, there is a chance that baby will sink in and then you have a situation like this where the baby can strangle or suffocate in the little bed piece. And last tip, but not least, is to double swaddle. So if you are using their typical swaddles, I found that it's not actually warm enough to use, so I make sure that I double swaddle my baby and I use the zippity zip swaddle where I'm able to put the Velcro comfortably over him and still have a lot of moving space for him so he's not too constrained in the swaddles. And there are other transitional swaddles that can also be used. I I also bought the baby Merlin suit to help transition him to a crib and that worked amazingly. However, there are mixed reviews on the safety of it and I just felt like it can be used such a small period of time that when baby starts to want to roll over, it would be a little bit harder for him or her to roll over. But if you want to use the Merlin suit in the snoo where you know the baby will not be rolling over on their stomach or on their side and get stuck in that position and possibly lead to SIDS, you can definitely use the Merlin suit just making sure that the baby is strapped and is not going to be rolling sideways or on their stomach. If you still feel like you need a little bit more input on this new, make sure to check out this video right here and that will surely help you make a good decision.